And suddenly, holiness. I felt completely holy. I felt the intenseness of the holiness of Jesus flood me. As I stood there completely astounded by the holiness and purity that had been transmitted from his presence into me, I stood now a foot away from him. I began to place my face into the light to try and see him. As I began to try and see his exposed face, Jesus began to move. All the radiance of his presence began to move. The light of his glory began to move simultaneously with him. As the Holy Spirit moved with Jesus, I watched an opening behind him, transparent. As I looked through this opening, I could see an entire new planet, fields and pastures. As I stood there, I knew in my heart that I'd been created by God to live here. I knew I was home. I thought, why was I not born here in the first place? Why was I born on that evil planet? I stood there. I knew that I had been created to live here. I stood in amazement. The radiance of, of God's presence was upon the creation. The flowers and the grass were giving off life. You knew if you stepped on it, it would spring back. I could see a crystal clear river, which I now know to be the river of life. And since this time, God has taken me many times back in the spirit, back into this realm, to drink freely of the river of living water. The spirit and the bride say, come and drink without cost from the river of life. I saw trees, I saw mountains, blue sky, a new heaven above this new earth. As I stood there, I was astounded, untouched by mankind, nothing of humanity on it, the radiance and glory of God's spirit upon all of creation. A new heaven and a new earth. As I stood there, I began to step forward. As I began to lift my foot to step in, Jesus came right back in front of me. As his radiance and presence and glory filled every part of who I was. He said, Ian, now that you've seen, do you wish to remain here? Or do you wish to return? I oh, thought, God, I wish to remain here. I have nothing to go back for. He didn't move. I said, well, I have no one to return for. I'm not married. I have no children or none that I know of. As he, st he still didn't move. I said, well, no one loves me. No one cares for me. You're the first person who's loved and accepted me as I am. As I said that, I looked behind to say goodbye, cruel world. As I looked back behind me, directly in the tunnel, was my mother. My mother is still alive today. She's 75 years of age, and she has prayed almost the entire family into salvation. In the knowledge of God. I thought I've just lied. There was one person who's loved me, one person who's prayed for me. Had I not seen her in the ambulance, I would most likely not be here because I'd never have called upon the name of the Lord. As I, lay, as I stood there, I thought, and if I'm dead, then I stepped through, would my mother know that I prayed? Would she have any idea that her son in an ambulance gave his life to Jesus? I thought, no, she'll think her son went straight to hell. What evidence would she have of a changed life? I thought, none. I thought it would be absolute selfishness to come in here and to let my mother bury me and to break her heart. I said, God, if I've been here once, I'm sure you'll allow me back here a second time. I was just checking. Because when you've been there once, you do not want to miss out a second time. But I have an assurance in my heart that if I was to die right now, I'd step through into the glory of God's kingdom. I have no fear of death. I know that I have eternal life. I know I have eternal life. I stood there and I said, God, I want to return and tell my mother what she believes in is real. I don't know how I came here, but I'll find out where this place is and I'm coming back again, whether anyone believes me or not. And whether any of you in this room believe me, it will not affect my salvation. I pray that you will believe. Not only believe upon Jesus, but receive him. Faith doesn't just believe, it receives. When you receive Jesus into your heart, you have eternal life. Christ in you, the hope of glory. As I stood there, I said, God, how do I go back? And he said, Ian, if you go back, you must see things in, 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 through, through my eyes in a new light. You must see things in a new light from an eternal heavenly perspective. I said, well, how do I do that? I looked back and I saw next to my mum, my dad, my brother, my sister, hundreds of thousands of people. As I stood there looking at them, I said, God, why do you show me all these other people? I don't know them. He said, son, I want you to return and tell these people what you've seen because most of them will not set foot inside a church any longer to hear 
my name. I want you to go back and tell them what you have seen. I said, but God, I don't know them. I don't love them. Who are they to me? I love my mother. He said, son, I love them. I desire all of them to come to know me. Suddenly I felt the heart of God and I burst into tears. I used to love those who loved me. I found that God loved people who cursed and hated them. I knew some of these people. They were my friends, but I knew them. And God loved them. And in 24 years, I've spent my entire time trying to share with whoever will listen. Jesus said, freely have received, freely give. My testimony is on DVD. God said, you give it away. You don't touch it. Everything you've received, give away. We sell them for a dollar. I'd love to just give them all you free. I don't have that kind of money to give them to you free. I wish I did. But you can buy them for a buck. Give them away. In 24 years, I've never sold anything. Why? Because we've received everything from free. Give it away. You can never outgive God. Never. Never. As I stood there, I said, God, how to return into my body? He said, Ian, tilt your head. Now feel the liquid drain from your eye. Now open your eye and see. I was instantaneously back in my body in a morgue on a slab with a young Indian doctor holding my foot in his scalpel in his hand, prodding my foot like a dead piece of meat. As I opened my eye, the poor doctor saw the head of the corpse move. As my eye opened, the poor doctor saw me and went as white as a sheet and screamed, but the voice, nothing came out of his mouth. <laughs> I thought, what's happened? What's the man doing my foot? I'm not dead. What's happened? Did I just see God? As I'm lying there, I hear the voice of God interrupt my thought and said, Son, I've just given your life back. I said, God, if that's true, can you please help me tilt my head to the left and look out the other eye? I'm getting sick of looking at him. I tilted my head to the left, opened my left eye, and here in the, in the doorway were nurses and orderlies packed in the door, staring at me. As my eye opened and looked at one nurse, the poor nurse got the fright of her life. She jumped back in fright, hit a nurse who was looking over her shoulder in the, in the chin, and knocked her to the ground. I thought, well, where's the man with the, on the heart? As I turned to the right and left, there was no one there. Met, nurses were running, and a doctor was shaking, holding my foot. I thought, you cannot bring a man back to life by doing that. Have I seen God? Was that all real? The poor doctor was still dumbstruck. He was shaking. He didn't move. As we stared at each other, eventually lowered my foot. He walked around the side. And as he talked to me, he said, You've been dead for over 15 minutes. We've done nothing to bring you back to life. I thought, I've seen God. I've seen God. As I lay there, I realized I could not move from my neck down. I thought, if I've been brain dead that long, I will never walk again. I'll be a vegetable. My service, central nervous system must be gone. I said, God, could you heal me? Could you enable me to walk out of this hospital and lead a normal life? If not, please take me back into heaven. I'd rather be dead than live on a machine. As I lay there, I felt this power like electricity begin to flow through my body. Wave after wave after wave. Wave, wave, wave. I felt my hands shaking as this power, my whole body. I felt this power going through me. And I found my body start to move. Healing came back into it. Within three or four hours, I was completely healed. I walked out of the hospital the next day, totally healed. I believe in the resurrection power of God. I believe in His healing power. The same Jesus Christ who, with His hands, laid hands upon sick and dying people. The same presence can move and touch us by his spirit directly as we contact and connect with the presence of the Holy Spirit. But he can also use people's hands who love him. Heal the sick. Touch their lives eternally. I walked out of the hospital. I said, God, what's happened? He said, you are a reborn Christian. I said, I've never heard the term. What does that mean? Do you have to die and come back to life? He said, no, son, you are dead in your sins. But when you prayed in that ambulance, you were born again. You were born again of the Spirit of God. The Lord's Prayer saved your soul. I said, what must I do now? He said, son, read a Bible. I said, I don't have one. I've never read a Bible. He said, your father has one. Ask your father for a Bible. I asked my dad for a Bible in 1982 when I returned back from Mauritius. Within six weeks, I read the entire Bible. As I read it, everything was in there. The light, the glory, the tunnel, 
the majesty, the person of Jesus. Revelations 1, 